Hey, I'm going to tell you about uh, the different parts of the double bass. So uh, I guess I'll start up here. We have the scroll and uh, what we call the scroll box, um, or uh, I guess violinists would call it the peg box. Um, and then we have the machine tuners. These are called machine tuners uh, because violins, they have these uh, things called pegs that are like a little piece of wood um, that goes into the scroll box, whereas these have little mechanisms like a machine. And then, uh, of course, you have the strings, and the strings attach or wrap around uh, the, uh, me the tuning mechanisms up here. Uh, and then you have the nut, uh, and that's actually really important to know because if I start talking about sizing or uh, if you're a beginning student and I tell you play in half position, I'm going to say, you know, it's going to be the closest position to the nut. Um, so, and that's where the strings kind of raise, are raised up just a little bit and they go into the box. And then this part, of course, is called the fingerboard. It's made of uh, ebony wood. Um, and uh, the back here we call the neck. And it comes down here. Uh, this is called the heel. Uh, some people call it the saddle. Um, uh, I've I really use both of those inter interchangeably, um, and uh, it depends on the student because some have heard uh, either or from their teachers that they've had before me. Uh, and then um, this is the top plate. Um, so this is made of spruce wood and uh, at least typically a good carved base um, which is like you know a more uh, higher level instrument uh, you know a more ideal instrument to have for um, at least for classical and and i like it for jazz um, it's going to have this um, usually a spruce top and um, and then maple ribs here on the sides and uh, a uh, maple back. Uh, if, if you notice, there's a little bit of a, uh, you might not notice with the camera, but there's like a, uh, almost like a flame effect. Uh, and so we call that flaming. Um, this is called uh, flame maple, is the type of wood that they use for this. And usually when you see this, it's a sign that you have uh, at least a, pr a decent instrument on your hands. Um, that doesn't mean that every decent instrument is going to have that, um, you know, especially if you have a plywood instrument, it, it wouldn't have that, but, um, but this is, you know, uh, just a, a, a standard um, thing that they do. Uh, and then you have the bridge, and uh, these things right here are the, uh, uh, the bridge adjusters. So I can raise the height of the strings or lower the height of the strings. Uh, sometimes in certain settings, uh, it's better to have the strings much higher, um, especially sometimes playing with the bow, uh, sometimes in certain uh, pizzicato settings, jazz and bluegrass, there are just times where it makes a lot of sense to have the strings high. Other times I like the strings to be low, especially when I'm playing like um, solo, stuff and uh, and also jazz sometimes I, I prefer to play with the strings uh, on a, like a medium low setting um, so that's good to have and then of course the tailpiece um, which uh, is just kind of attaches down here at the bottom and holds the strings in place um, and I have pickup here. This is a David Gage Realist pickup. Um, fantastic pickup. This is the lifeline. Uh, so it attaches right here uh, next to the adjuster. And that um, is for amplification. I can plug a guitar cable in and go straight into uh, a, an amp or a sound system or a DI box uh, if I'm in the studio. And um, then we have, uh, this is just like a bow quiver, and of course I have the bow. Um, 
so that way I can reach for it while I'm at a gig, especially on a gig where I don't use it a lot, but sometimes I need to go for it quickly. And then on the bottom here, uh, you can probably see that there's this pin that comes out. Uh, a lot of people recognize that who've seen a bass before. That's called the end pin, or sometimes we just call it the pin. Um, for those of us who are cool, we call it the pin. And uh, that raises the height of the bass. Um, there are many different philosophies on how low or high that should be, um, but typically bass players like to have uh, this part, the nut that we talked about at eye level, so or, or just above eye level. Um, some bass players like it a little bit higher. So um, just kind of depends. So that, that's there. It can be adjusted uh, depending on the height of the player and the preferences. Um, and yeah, that's about it.